Sticking to India, actually, um, there are riots. We, we have seen riots over the last few years more so. And each time, um, you know, th th from the Delhi riots to the West Bengal riots to the current riots in Haryana, time and time again, it then comes to light that they are sponsored, they're funded, they're organized. Can you give us a bit more light about who these people are sponsoring, what their goal is, you know, is any resolutions, any, any light on the subject? So, you know, this is something that I think it was at Lee Kuan Yew who wrote about, that when he landed in India, he was meant to be the uh, chief guest at Republic Day or something like that. And he uh, apparently asked Indira Gandhi, you know, I picked up the newspaper today and everything was right here, right there, right here, right there. What the hell is happening? And without a batting an eyelid, she turned around and she said, you know, this is like a pressure cooker. We keep letting small explosions happen here and there so that one big explosion doesn't happen. So writing in India is seldom spontaneous. Uh, there is a spontaneity to every riot, but there's also a lack of spontaneity to every riot because every time a riot happens, there's usually an interested group that wants to settle scores. So, for example, pogroms in Europe, right? Uh, you label, uh, 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 basically you invoke uh, uh, blood libel against the local Jew. Uh, the anger is spontaneous. But the spark is deliberately lit. The rioting is largely spontaneous, but it's done to hide the crime. Like, you know, uh, Ekul Poirot's ABC murder, where only the A was the actual murder, the B and C were done to, were picked out of the telephone directory to confuse Ekul Poirot and Scotland Yard about the motive of that murder. It's like that. The, the pogrom hides the money lender and his family to be killed off so that the money lender does not have to be paid back again. And that is what you see with a lot of rioting in India. Yes. Right. Uh, in this case, uh, what you see in Manipur is lots of things coming together. Uh, a very concerted uh, attempt to change the demog uh, demography of the region. Uh, a lot of sort of sustenance to... Uh, terrorism there by the church out there, a lot of foreign money coming in, a lot of foreign arms coming in. The fact that the majority community there, communities there, do not want what is now the Hindu minority to be given reservation anymore. Right. Right. Now, you get to demand reservation. You can't say that somebody else can't be given reservation. So it, it was kind of the thing. And this comes about... Because the court directs the local government to ensure reservation for the mighties. Just like the entire uh, uh, Delhi riots started off because the court at that time under an Assamese who was under a severe conflict of interest demanded that the CAA, the Citizenship Amendment Act and the National Register of Citizens be enacted in his home state of Assam where he had personal gain. All right. But remember, even those Delhi riots, we're told about Shaheen Bagh being very peaceful rubbish. Shaheen Bagh, this is a continuum of violence where they want you to focus on the for show sure peaceful bit. Uh, and like we spoke about pogroms, you know, which were done to hide the killing of the moneylender. Shaheen Bagh was the uh, foil. Uh, what, uh, you know, uh, I'm a gay guy, so I have a beard when I go to a party, which is a pretty lady to accompany me along. To pretend, yeah, she's my wife, man. She's like, whatever, whatever. She's my girlfriend, she my chick, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, <laughs> like, you know, football talk in the locker room, bro. Kind of crap. I'm sorry, I've never been in a football <laughs> room, so I don't know what bro talk is and all that crap, but I'm assuming from Hollywood movies this is what happens. Anyway, so what they do is, it started off at a place called Silampur, which is where the rioting broke out. It was extremely violent. Then there was, there was rioting in Jamia Media Islamia. The police went in to teach the rioters a lesson. And then they suddenly formed a human shield. And suddenly, overnight, within the space of two hours, claimed that they were peacefully protesting, mm -hmm. essentially to protect the rioters in their midst. And as and when required, see, this was a safe haven from which the terrorists could hide and then go out to do riots and come back and hide and go back to do riots, which then became the Delhi riots. Right. 
Right. Right. So my friend Gunja Kapoor, she was abducted by these people, held hostage, abused, her phone was stolen, whatnot. To date, nobody has arrested the people who kept her hostage for six, seven, eight hours, stole her phone, slapped her around, whatever. And then they claim they have nothing to hide and all she was doing is wearing a burqa and making videos. Wow. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.